everybody to my edition of the mid-year book freak out tag. It is the middle of June and I have a lot of books to talk about. But before I get started, this is a tag that's going around. I wish I could credit the person who came up with it. I just don't know who it is. So, so if you do, please let me know. The idea behind it is that I just talk about my first half of the year. I talk about my favorite books, my least favorite books, and as always, I'm gonna put timestamps down below for you so that you can coordinate what you want to watch or just watch the entire thing which would make me very happy as always i'm always interested in hearing your opinions so for every single one of these questions that i'm gonna ask myself i'm also gonna ask you to put it down below like your favorite books your least favorite books so far so let's get into this first off i don't know if this is part of the tag but i'm still gonna do it i'm gonna give you a few numbers so this year in total um i have read 119 books Yes, it is the middle of June and I've read 119 books. We don't talk about me and my mental health right now. We just ignore it. Now that that's done, um, another number I don't actually want to tell you, but I still uh, have to tell you about. Well, I don't have to, but I'm, I'm, not, I'm gonna be honest with you. This relationship between us, it depends on me being honest. So my TBR right now is 307 books. Yeah. Let's move on to the actual first category, which is the best book I have read so far this year. And I have two of those. This was about the third or fourth book that I read this year, and it is Reckless by Elsie Silver. It is one of the best books I've read so far this year. And I know that this might be a controversial pick, okay? I know, I know, it's a romance, it's cheesy, it's cliche, but it's so good and it made me so beyond happy that I just have to tell you about it. This is a small town romance. All of Elsie Silver's books are small town romances, but this one in particular, this is my favorite book in the Chestnut Spring series. It's so good. Yes, it's Surprise Pregnancy. Do I care? No. Do I actually like the surprise pregnancy trope? Yes, I do. I do. When it's done well, I love it. And this, this is done well. So I love it. Yay! So we have Theo the Bull Rider and our main character who just got out of a very, very toxic marriage. They have a one night stand. She ends up being pregnant. He disappears. And then he comes back and there's a kid and he's like, is that my kid? It's so good. It's such a good book. I love it. You'll love it too. I can already tell. The other book that I want to talk about is As Long As The Lemon Trees Grow. So As Long As The Lemon Trees Grow is about a romance that is set during the Syrian revolution. It's heavy. It has so much heartbreak. It's a romance not only between people but also between your home country. It's the story about two people who meet during the Syrian revolution, during the war, and who realize that they need to leave their home behind. It's a story about family, about love, about partnership. It's just so good, so beautifully written. It's one of the best things I've ever read. It is by far a six-star read. And I can only encourage everybody to pick up this book because it's so good. Also, I'm two books in and I'm already sweating, so fun. Also, what do you think of my outfit? Like, I'm feeling cute today. It's, I've never worn this thing in my life. I didn't even know I had it. I just, I was looking through my wardrobe because I need to do laundry, but I'm kind of pushing it away. And I found this and I was like, this is kind of cute. But then I was like, this is feeling too naked. So I was like, huh? With the, with this, whatever this is, I feel cute. On to the next question, which is, your favorite sequel. And who would I be if I just put the sequel in, right? I'm gonna talk about both books. One Dark Window and the best sequel of all time, Two Twisted Crowns. I read both of these in one go, so I finished the first one and then I immediately went on to the second one because I had to. These were incredible and the sequel was better than the first book. This is a dark gothic fantasy that has a little bit of a romance, but is mostly just a very large, like, found family, but also just epic and dark and gothic, and I've said that before, but it was so good and so fun. It's about this magical world that exists because of some playing cards that were created years ago, and each one of these cards gives a person, like, a sort of power. And our main character is just so incredibly good. I just loved it. Usually I don't like when it has starts in the first book and the characters are, like, separated, but in this case it made it so much better. It was great. I loved it so much. 
it was so good. The next category is new releases that came out this year that I haven't read yet, but I want to. I really want to. And for that, I have three books right here that I'm gonna talk about. Well, the first one is When the Moon Hatched. This is a fantasy book about dragons. What more can I say? My obsession with dragons, like, came up again because of Fourth Wing, right? All our obsession with dragons came up again because of Fourth Wing. And um, since I didn't like Iron Flame, I lost my source of dragon material very, very quick. But then I found this, and everybody's been saying that it's so good and so fun, so I am hyped to read this. The preface of this book is I think we have an assassin who is kind of trying to do good so she only only unalives the bad people, right? That's her job. But then she gets locked up and then she kind of teams up with a dragon rider, I think. That's what's going on. I don't exactly know what's going on, but I just know that I will love it because so many people said that they loved it. So I'm definitely also gonna love it. I'm excited. Also, I may or may not be reading this book right now. This is where my bookmark is at, right? I'm like 130 pages in and it's very good so far. That's all I can tell you because the reading vlog of me reading this will come out on Saturday. But I'm hyped. The next book, this one just came out like a few weeks ago. This is The Honey Witch. This is a kind of cottagecore witchy romancy story about a witch who's been cursed never to find love and a girl that then comes to visit her who doesn't believe in curses and the two of them kind of like start having feelings for each other and I think that that sounds beautiful. I am hoping to get to it because it just looks so pretty. The cover is giving Bridgerton and it's giving everything that I want in a book. And then I'm also extremely excited for this one. This is Fate Breaker. This is is the last book in the Realm Breaker series. I have been so scared to pick this up. It came out in like the beginning of January, but I have been too scared to read it because I don't know what's gonna happen. It is also the Waterstones exclusive with the spread edges. It's gorgeous. I loved the first book and the second book. I'm just so scared of the third book that I just like, I need a breather and I have not been able to pick it up, but I will. Sometime this year, I will pick this book up and I will read it. The next one are highly anticipated new releases, okay? And I don't have as many highly anticipated new releases just because I'm trying to stop myself because I, I just can't, I can't, I can't, okay? But one of the new releases that I'm extremely hyped about, I'm just gonna put them here. I'm not gonna talk about them too much. Striker. By, by Anna Huang. It's a soccer romance. I'm pretty sure I'm gonna love it. It sounds so good. I'm just here for it, okay? I am just here for it. So that's what I'm excited for. And then the other one I'm excited for is Rewitched. Can we just take a second to appreciate this cover? I just saw it because it was so beautiful. I have this pre-ordered. It comes out in like September or something, but I am so ready. This is a cozy, small town, witchy romance. I'm just here for it. I love small town, witchy romances. So then the last book I'm extremely excited for is Lost and Lassoed. This is the third book in the Swift and Saddled Done and Dusted series. I don't know what it's called, but I am hyped. I really, really enjoyed the first book and the second book, so I am sure that I'm also gonna love the next book in the series. All right, now moving on from the perfect made me happy or will make me happy books to the books that disappointed me. We're gonna start with the biggest disappointment, which I don't even know why I was so disappointed, but I just was. So I'm just gonna hold the book up and then I'm gonna talk about it. Powerless. I gave this a three star rating, by the way. It was still good. It just wasn't as exceptional as everybody was trying to tell me. And the only reason why I didn't like it is because it felt very unoriginal. I loved the writing. I really, really enjoyed the novella, the powerful novella that came out. I just didn't enjoy this one because it just felt so unoriginal. And that's all I'm gonna say about it because I don't have more to say. And then the second book that was a disappointment to me is this one. If he had been with me, I DNF'd this book like halfway through. 
I could not, for the life of me, connect to any of these characters. I didn't know what to do. I didn't know what to think. The characters felt so, so young to me. And I'm saying this is a 23 year old. Like I'm not that much older than the main character in this book was, but I felt like I was 10, 20 years older. It was just not my cup of tea. It is a romance. It's supposed to be sad. I don't remember a thing about it because I just didn't care. And I just, I didn't like it. So we're just not gonna talk about it and move on to more positive topics. Because now we're gonna talk about my biggest surprises of the year so far. And I have two or three books here to talk about. First one is The Midnight Library. I have put this book off for so, so long because I was never in the right mindset and I thought that this book was something very, very different than it actually was. So The Midnight Library is about depression. It focuses a lot on that and it focuses on a main character who takes her own life and ends up in the Midnight Library, where she gets the chance to relive every single choice she's ever made and look into her life and how it would look like if she had made different choices. And then if she feels really, really happy in her life, she can pick it and stay there. That's how the Midnight Library works. I have to say, I was pleasantly surprised by this book. I enjoyed it a whole lot more than I thought I would. I, I think I rated this a 4.5 stars. It was so good, so fun. It wasn't even that sad. Like I thought I was gonna be sobbing and it was gonna be like so hard on my head and my brain. It was really good. It was kind of funny throughout it. And I had such a good time that I even recommended this to a few of my friends. Like this was good. And then two more books that were really, really surprising to me um, are these two. This is Alive and Wells and Seeing Red. Now. Let me tell you why these surprised me. Usually when I go into Kindle Unlimited romances, I don't have high hopes. I don't expect much of these books. I just, I'm just here for a good time or a kind of good time. But with these two books, I had such a good time. I had a time that good that I ordered the books and now have them as a paperback. These are small town cowboy romances, very spicy, very fun, very uplifting. The first one is about some a girl who gets out of a very toxic relationship, very toxic marriage, and we just, like, we have all the things we need. We have a very possessive book boyfriend. We have, like, this small town cowboy ranch setting. And then this one is kind of like an enemies to lovers, also like pregnancy trope romance that I just enjoyed so much. So these two were such a surprise to me that I just had to mention them because they were great and I really enjoyed them. Next up is my new favorite author. And by this, I am choosing an author that I have never read a book of before this year. I discovered her I was late to the party, to be honest, but uh, I, I did it. And I finally read all these books by Hannah Bonham Young. And you probably know this one. This is Out on a Limb. This is probably her most popular book and also my favorite book of hers. Like, I love this so much. It was so good. And then you also have Next of Kin and Next to Her. These were both so great. I don't know how she does this, but all of these characters in these books just seem so realistic and so real because they have real life struggles. And the romances are just adorable and cute. I just had a great time. And if you've been thinking about picking up a book by Hannah Bonham Young, do it. Please do it. They're great. So amazing, incredible, great. Next up, we're gonna talk about books that made me cry. All right, I cry a lot. I usually cry, like every other book that I read, I cry. So the biggest cry that I had this year was this book, okay? As long as lemon trees grow made me sob, but I already talked about it, so I'm just gonna put it aside. Just know, be warned, this will make you cry. So we're gonna talk about this little guy. This is Cersei. Cersei is a teeny tiny book. For some reason, Cersei is very thick, has kind of like very small pages, it, it's like a Bible, right? But it's Circe. So this is Greek mythology, in case you're interested in Greek mythology. You've heard about Circe before, right? I've just been scared because I've read the Song of Achilles ages ago. I loved it, but I cried so much. So I was like, huh, maybe Circe will make me cry again, make me like destroy my life again. It, it did. It did, but it was great and I had a blast doing it. So it was worth it. And then the other book that made me cry a lot, like a lot, a lot. They both die at the end. Surprise, I cried. I cannot imagine why I did, 
with a title like that. Like, I went into this thinking I would cry, and I, I did. This is about a world where you get a call at midnight on the day that you die, and our two main characters both get this call at midnight, like, Yo, dude, you're gonna die today. Like, enjoy your last day. They, so the two of them then meet up on this app, and they decide to spend their last day together, and it's just the saddest thing you've ever read, honestly, because they both know that it'll end. And you, as a reader, are always like, I hope it's just not real. I just hope it's not real. And the whole time, you're just like hoping and praying. And the emotional stress that is this book, worth it. 100% worth it. Next up, we have books that made me happy. It's not that hard to make me happy, okay? I'm a very happy being in general. So books usually just make me happy purely by existing. But here are some books that made me flutter inside and make me all giggly and happy. So we're gonna talk about them first off. This one. This is Off to the Races by Elsie Silver. If you're confused, wait, has Elsie Silver published a new book? No. This is her first book. This is the first series that she ever wrote. This is the Gold Rush Ranch series. This is hard to say. Gold Rush Ranch, Gold Rush Ranch, Gold Rush Ranch. If you haven't read them yet, they're small town cowboy romances on a farm with like horses. So it's technically like a racing farm, which is really cool and really fun and I had a blast reading this. The entire series is getting new covers this year, so the new covers are slowly coming out, which is why I finally have this paperback edition of this book and I'm getting the rest of the series as well. I'm just very excited. These are great. The next book that made me very happy is this. This is The Fake Mate. If you're wondering why is it called The Fake Mate, it's because it's an Omegaverse werewolf story. I don't have anything to say to defend myself because I love this book to pieces and it was so much fun. It's kind of giving like Allie Hazelwood sciency books, but make it werewolf, which I know Bride is also just that. But if you like this vibe of Ally Hazelwood's book and werewolf stories, you're gonna like this. There are two werewolf doctors who are then pretending to be mated because they each have their own little drama problem, but then it turns out that they would actually have real feelings for each other and they might be just suppressed their mating bonds and feelings. And it's just amazing and I loved every single second of this book. It was so fun, very spicy, very giddy making. It's great. And then the last book that made me very happy was also a romance. I know, it's it's romance heavy. I've been reading a lot of romance this year. It is When in Rome by Sarah Adams. This was fun. I don't know why I read the second book like last year and then I read the first book like two weeks ago. This was such a fun, cute romance. Again, small town vibes. He's a pie baker and she's a celebrity, but he is grumpy and she's kind of like a depressed sunshine. Which doesn't make sense right now, but it makes sense in the long run, right? It's just cute. I love the small town vibes. It's giving a Hallmark Christmas movie, by the way, and that's all we need. The next category are the most beautiful books I've read this year. And I've already talked about a few of the books that I, like, loved cover-wise, but I'm just gonna talk about a few more because some other books deserve to be in here. And this is our main contestant, The Book That Wouldn't Burn. This is stunning. A beautiful, beautiful book. It's also a beautiful, beautiful story about a magical library that keeps all the knowledge of the world. I had a blast. This was so much, at the same time, not enough. And then I could not make a video and talk about beautiful book covers and not mention Magnolia Parks once. This series was not my favorite of the year. Like, I didn't really enjoy these books as much. I really liked the Daisy Hates books in that series. I made a whole video talking about them up here. I'm gonna link it, right? But the covers... Like, you can't tell me that these covers are literal works of art. They're just stunningly beautiful. These are like high society, gossip girl-ish books, but in London, and very toxic relationships, and they're just fun. And with that, we're already at the last category for today. Wow, that's gone fast, or not. I don't have a sense of time anymore. But the last category is books that I still need to read this year. Like, by the end of the year, I want these books to, like, not be on my TV are anymore. Mostly because they've been on there for a little too long. First one is Five Survive by Holly Jackson. I don't know why I'm putting this book off. I'm just never in the right mood for it. And every time I see it, I'm just like, ah, next time, ah, next time. And never, there was never the next time. It never happened. So I am putting this on my yearly TBR. And if by the end of December, I have not read this book, 
I will make a reading vlog, reading all of the books that I have said I would in this video. Like, I promise you, they will be done by New Year's. This is a thriller, by the way. A YA thriller, six people go into the woods, five come out alive, one has to die. That's the preface of this book. The next book is also a little bit of a mystery. It's a very popular one. It's the Hawthorne Legacy. This is the second book in the Inheritance Games series. I've never finished that series. I read the first book and then I never continued them and I don't know why, but I just never did. And my goal for this year is to finish this series. And I know I can do it. I know I can. I just have to sit myself down and actually try. The first book is about a girl who inherits a huge amount of money and who then has to live inside this Hawthorne mansion with the entire family of the guy who gave her the money who didn't get anything. It's fun. It's a mystery. And then the last book that we're going to talk about today is a book that I need to read this year and that is Ruthless Vows. I've been pushing this away because I'm so scared. I absolutely loved Divine Rivals when I read it last year and I loved that book so much that I immediately was like, okay, I need this. And then I found one thing out that, that made me so scared because this starts with the amnesia trope. And if you know me, then you know that I'm scared of the amnesia trope and I don't like it. So I'm super scared that I'm not gonna enjoy this book. So please, please tell me that this is good so that I can read it. I wanna know. Or tell me that it's not good. I just wanna know what I'm, what I'm gonna expect, like what I have to expect from this. I just want to know. And that was it, you guys. That was it. I've talked about so many books in so little time. I don't think I've ever done that before, but this was fun. I really like this concept of the video and I'm very glad that this challenge exists. Please let me know of any books that are in these categories for you. I would very, very much appreciate it. If you did enjoy this video, please leave a like. And if you enjoy me in general as a person, please consider subscribing if you don't already. And I will see you for the next video that I make. Goodbye, everybody. That was a very abrupt ending. I didn't even say anything else. But then again, do I have to? Do I really have to? Yeah. I'm gonna go back to reading now because that is what I do. And I will have to clean all these books up. I'll see you soon. Bye!